geometric tolerancing now uh, geometric tolerancing quiz quiz number five not a lot of questions in this one so uh, you should be able to get through it pretty good now don't forget these quizzes are all based on the student workbook and this particular one is in section five part e geometric tolerancing so make sure you look at that you're going to have fun doing the quiz without reading this so um the uh, geometric tolerancing is making sure things are accurate other than dimensions. So you might, you know, dimensions, for example, the diameter of a shaft has to be accurate. And we looked at fits and tolerances, particularly a shaft and a hole, um, and, and how accurate those dimensions need to be. But there's other types of accuracy as well. For example, um, what about if something's supposed to be right angles? How do you tolerance how accurate the right angle is. So do you want to put an angle in there and put plus and minus degrees? So they have a special way of doing this and it's called geometric tolerancing. So here is a bunch of geometric tolerances off this student workbook here. Um, they're looking at um, the um, feature itself. So self-reference means these features, uh, for example, the, the flatness of a surface or the roundness of a of a shaft those are self-references and references between two things is like are the two things parallel are they square uh, are they concentric that sort of stuff all right so here are a list of geometric tolerances with their symbols and that's really the first question here we need to link up uh, which ones which so uh, you can just grab your student workbook and work out which one's which. So the one with the two um, consecutive or concentric holes is a concentric one, so that one's pretty easy. So you shouldn't have too much trouble uh, getting those ones. Some of these are a little bit more obscure. You won't see them very often, uh, but certainly concentric, that's a, that's a pretty important one. Um, parallel, two things ne needing to be parallel, perpendicular, uh, positional. All right, so um, <clears throat> just just follow your student workbook for that question. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, so concentric, square, straight, parallel, flat, and they're all pretty straightforward. This with profile of a line, you don't see that real often, or profile of a surface. Um, run out is um, a different way of specifying a shaft, typically a shaft um, feature making sure that that shaft feature as it's rotating doesn't go out of a certain boundary um, with respect to something else. So uh, roundness, how round is something? Is it cylindrical? So they're two different things. So round is just on the, it doesn't have any length, whereas cylindrical has to be round along length. And symmetric, symmetricness, uh, symmetry and position um, which is how accurate is the position of something, um, which is the sort of thing that's um, tending to get used a bit more because of uh, CNC. Now, here is a nice little example of where you would use these tolerances. So here we have a bearing, which is, well, we've got this housing, which has two bushes for bearings and then you have a shaft go through that. It's not supposed to be threaded. I don't know what that's all about. And then, um, and then you've got to put this pulley on here. Now you don't want things too out of round or out of um, tolerance, so this pulley will go up and down. And we don't want these two bearings not to point at each other. Otherwise, when you put the shaft in, you go through one bearing, okay, and then you hit the other bearing, and it doesn't line up. So you have to make sure those two bearings line up. So. Here we have parallelism. We're making sure that we are parallel with those two surfaces. So the inside surface of this bearing, or this housing, which is called C, that's the datum, it's given a datum C, that has to be lined up with the inside surface of the other one, this one here. So we want this inside diameter of the housing to be parallel with the inside of this one. So they need to be parallel. But not only do they need to be parallel, but they also need to be lined up. So they need to be in a straight line. That's what this one is here. 
<clears throat> now we've got a flatness tolerance on the bottom. Yeah, there's a mounting um, point there. Um, we have a concentric here. We're, we're saying that the the V in the pulley needs to be concentric with B. Now where's B? B is the inside. So you've got to go and find B. There it is there. The B is the inside of the pulley. So the pulley hole. So the hole in the pulley has to be concentric to the pulley V within 0.02. So that so doesn't go uh, up and down as it spins. And squareness, which is um, surface A, needs to be square with this uh, that's also pointing at diameter here that's basically how it works you're looking at um some of them like flatness is just a self um it's just, it's just not reference to something else so if, it's saying that as you measure this entire flat area it's now not allowed to go up or down by more than 0.02 that's what flatness means and concentric means um as you rotate this around this doesn't go up and down by more than 0.02 so if you Put a shaft in here and clocked it the dial indicator wouldn't move more than 0.02 uh, these ones are a bit harder to check the um, parallelness it's a bit hard to, to measure them all right so this goes through a bunch of um, different examples of not all of them but uh, some of the main ones here and you can see that from the example parallelism Flatness, making sure that, that base is flat. All right, so question one, fairly straightforward. You can just kind of do it from the from the student notes. Which, um, control thing. This table here. So concentricity, some of these are pretty straightforward, parallel, that's going to be that one, square, square, perpendicularity, hmm. angularity, see, you can do some of these off the top of your head, that's flatness there. Cylindricity, position, and you can look the rest up. And geometric tolerancing. The, the geometric tolerancing for a V pulley, choose the correct answers below. So, what is true here? Let's have a look. So, process elimination, really. Concentricity is more sensitive than perpendicularity. All right, so concentricity is 0 0.02, 0.02, and perpendicularity is 0 0.2. Uh, yeah, that's true. So that's correct. That's a true one. Concentricity must be within 0.2. Concentricity, no, that's not right. Surface A must be flat to within 0.2 millimeters. Surface A, no, it's not flat. It's the perpendicular. That's wrong. Surface A must be perpendicular to surface B. Surface A. Surface A is this line. Right, this is surface A. This end of the pulley must be perpendicular with surface B. Is this cylinder in here? That's the surface B in here. This cylindrical hole. So surface B is the hole. So surface A, which is the end of the pulley, has to be within 0 0.2 millimeters perpendicular. Yes, that's exactly what that says. Perpendicular within 0 0.2. Yep. The squareness tolerance says the hole must be a square shape. Well, um, obviously that ain't true. All right. So that's what we have for our answers here on this next one <clears throat> all right moving on to not going to do multiple choice let's just see moving on to this next question
we are looking at a real drawing now and we're going to choose the correct values for each one so the perpendicular perpendicularity big word of surface a to surface c all right well, where's a so this is surface a here all right there's that there's that a so it's the end space of that thing look like a flange with a thread on it so it's sort of a voltage on flange which has a thread here because it says m42 that's a that's a metric thread all right so perpendicular surface a to surface c now where's c find the c there's c there which is referencing this diameter all right so that is c there so that diameter is surface c and surface a is that all right so do they need to be perpendicular yeah that's a perpendicular symbol and accuracy of 0.08 all right so um perpendicular there is 0.08 Minimum size of surface B. Now, surface B, we'll find the B now. There's B there. All right. B is referring to the dimension of that, which is this one. All right. And this is B, which means it's this one. That's B. That hole. So it's the smallest hole in the middle. This one. Okay. The minimum size of surface B. Now, what is this? This goes from diameter 20 to 20.13. So the minimum size is diameter 20. The run out of surface B compared to surface C. Okay, surface, I'm going to change colors. Get lost here. Run out of B. Now we already know what B So this is B. Run out of B with C. Here's the surface C. Surface C is this one. So that's C. So that and this B need to be within a certain rotational limit. So it's not letting it up and down while it's spinning. We don't want these to wobbly, wobbly while it's spinning. Because this is fixed to something probably. This is probably where it's um, attached to a shaft or something. And then this might attach to something else. Maybe a bearing goes in here. So we don't want this to be wobbling when it's supposed to be staying straight. So that's why there's a run out um, limit on it. The run out between B and C. So um, this would be our, this is our run out symbol. So that's not from six. So 60 microns. So not a lot. Maximum diameter of surface C. Uh, C is this one. Maximum diameter. Okay, there's our diameter for C. Maximum diameter is 44.6. And positional accuracy of the eight holes. All right, now we've got a bunch of uh, numbers up here for the eight holes. We've got eight lots of diameter 7.9 to 8.1, so it's supposed to be eight. Uh, plus or minus 0.1 and the positional accuracy that's the positional accuracy symbol there um, within 0 0.14 and the flatness of surface A there's A and there's flatness on it there Two. Let's see how we go.
So far, we have numbers are there, but we want. Look at that. Ready. All right, next question. Another drawing, kind of a similar part. It's not exactly the same, but it's close. We don't know exactly how many holes there are here. Um, and the tolerances this time are given as fit tolerances. See these H's? H's and H6, H8, right? They're all whole, uh, shaft hole tolerances. So diameter of surface A and the run out tolerance on the 50 mm. So diameter of surface A, so this surface A here, go back to red. So surface A is this one. All right, diameter of surface A, so there's my dimension A. Because I could have been told that if it's nominally 40, right, but that doesn't mean it's exactly 40 though. Nominal diameter for you. But that's actually H8. So you'd have to go back to your um, fits and tolerances um, table, whole based fits chart, and look up what the actual dimensions for that 40 is. Is it, is it 40 plus 40? It's going to be plus, it'll be um, minimum 40 and maximum you know, 40 point something. And the run out tolerance of the 50 mil shaft compared to surface. A, so we can put a run out. There's only one geometric tolerance in here, which is this run out. So the run out time of the 50 mil, yes, that's the 50 mil. It's pointing to the same one. That's the 50 mil. Yep, that's definitely the right one. Compared to surface A, so it's relative to this thing. So very similar to the last part. This, whatever that's mounting onto, has to have a um, has to be concentric enough. Well, actually, it's not concentric. It's run out. Um, to this surface so that it doesn't wobble, basically. You don't want a bearing uh, to be off center. That's very annoying. Yeah, assuming that's a bearing in there. All right, run out tolerance would be 0.05. Fairly easy question, this one. Number four. Five. Yep, that's working. Next question. Here's a shaft drawing. This comes out of your workbook. Same drawing, just being compressed up a bit. <clears throat> now, uh, with this drawing, uh, a couple of tricks to it. One is that it is a set of drawings, actually. So there is a bunch of parts uh, that have a different dimension A, which is these ones here. So, so this dimension A can vary depending on what shaft that you want. So you can have 1500, 16, da, 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 different lengths of shaft. The other thing about this drawing, which you wouldn't necessarily pick up, at first is that it's symmetrical so the left and right sides are identical which means you don't have to you don't have to dimension it twice because you dimension one side you dimension both of them so we've put all our diameters and lengths on the left hand side and we've put some of our surface finish and tolerancing on the right hand side but the assumption would be that they're the same uh, generally, if a drawing is missing a dimension, it means that you don't need it. So you have to imply that that dimension comes to come from somewhere else. For example, if you had a hole and it doesn't say the depth of the hole, you're going to assume that the hole goes right through. That's how it works. Well, same here. If, you, if you're not going to give us the dimensions of this, then we're going to assume, oh, well, this, it must be the same as the ones on the other side then. You don't have any other options. All right, concentricity of the 50.8, so there's a 50.8 there.
and concentric. Yep, that's what it's tolerancing. So that's a 0 0.02. Straightness of surface B. Where's B? I'm looking for B. Now there it is. So B is this one. This surface, which also happens to be this one as well. Because as I said, they're symmetrical. So straightness is this geometric tolerance there, and that has to be within 0.3. And Concentricity of A with B. Alright, so our B is, so A is this surface here. It needs to be concentric with B, the one we just mentioned. So these two have to be concentric with each other. And that way it's not going to wobble. Obviously a bearing fits on these two surfaces here. There'll be two bearings. And we don't want this thing wobbling. Concentricity of surface A with surface B. So here's our concentricity. And we're talking from B. So B, this this is re referring to B, right? So it's saying B must be concentric to within point 0.5 of A. That's how you read this. This is a concentric one. So B's got two things. It's got to be um, straight and it also has to be concentric. So within 0.5. Yep, so far so good. Now this next question. Question six, drag the geometric tolerance to the appropriate location in the drawing. Alright, so you're doing your own geometric tolerance now. So what does this say? This says parallel, right? Parallel within point two of A. So um what that can't be parallel because this is this is this diameter side so you can't say this is parallel to a that doesn't make sense right whereas this one you could because this is two surfaces that need to be parallel so that one should go there you can't possibly have the diameter parallel to the end and then this one is straight so so this would go here straight So uh, we can't possibly put that there because, of course, you can't have the diameter parallel with the end. It has to be there. And we get one and one. Question seven. Same sort of thing, making a tolerance in here. Concentric with A. Now, it can't be this one because that is A. See, A is this surface here, right? It's the 15. A is the 15 diamond. And we're saying something's concentric with A. Now, obviously, it can't be A. So, therefore, this must be that one. Which is the 20. This is the diameter of 20, this is referring to. Because you can tell it goes to that 20 mil dimension. So therefore that's talking about the 20 diameter, which is this one here. So this has to be concentric within 0.03 of this one. So we want those two to be concentric once again, so that doesn't work. And this 15 here could be called A. So you can either do that. Or you can put it here. Now, of course, you're not going to do it twice, but if you put it here, it, it's not a contradiction. It's still true. It's just that you did it twice. Okay. 
Okay, it's more um, geometric time sync buildings, all right, we need a perpendicular and a parallel. So just watching out for what's perpendicular. A is, A is this flat face here. A is this one. So that's A there. The end of this plate is A. All right, so, um, so this is referring to that dimension. So this dimension can't be perpendicular to A, it doesn't make sense. Now what's B? Now B is an end face, so it would be like the top of this. So um, B could be like this actual block. Now it's just a square block, right? And the end face is A, and the big face is B. So, what could be parallel? So, if B is the top face, that, then if I'm doing the underside of this, underneath, which is what this is, this is the underside, then the, yeah, that can be parallel, so that would be that one. Now, does that make sense for this one? Perpendicular to A, so, so the 25, which is referring to these faces here, yeah, the 25s, would they be perpendicular to A? Yes, they would be, so that would be that one. Right now, this time we're actually building a geometric times. So the whole thing. So the symbol, the number, and the face that you're building. But that, most of the geometric times are based on three things. So you want the symbol, what is it? Concentric, flat, parallel, blah, blah, blah. By a certain amount, 5.05, da, 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 da. Two surface, da, da, da. Right, so this geometric tolerancing is referring to surface C, so that, which is this one. So this diameter, which is diameter 30, has to be something. All right, so the right side, the middle diameter shaft, yeah, C, which is surface C, needs to be concentric. All right, so there's our geometric concentric. So that's the first thing we need is concentric. It goes in there. With the left side 30 mil, which is, what is it? That's surface A. Not to be confused with surface B, which is the big size, but you don't know I'm um, Left side is 30 mil, so we want that to be concentric, but in 50 microns, 50 microns is this one, 0 0.05. So 0.05 goes in there with surface A. So concentric, 0.05, and surface A. And another build your own geometric tolerancing again. All right, geometric tolerancing for, okay, what's it say this time? Perpendicular, the indicated face, which is this one, like this face, needs to be perpendicular. So perpendicular symbol, that's the first one. It's a perpendicular geometric times. To the bottom, the bottom is this face here, and we've got a name for that, it's D. So D is in our last box. And it's five microns. Woohoo! Five microns is this one. Double out of five. This thing So 
So we want um, perpendicular to five minus minus with D. Good, that's it. One geometric Thomson quiz completed.